Well, it's that time of the week again. It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond. This is episode number 776 for November 2nd, 2023, and I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. Back after a long hiatus that I can't even explain why it happened, this week our guest is one of my favorite recurring guests, Adam Enks, publisher of the long-running internet-based email newsletter, Tidbits. You might have heard of it. It's great to have you back on the show, Adam. Thank you. And I, and I have to say, I am sitting here, we, you actually are across a pond, because there's a pond in my front yard um, facing west, and I'm in New York. So by definition, you are across my Perfect. pond. Perfect. We've also been known to accept alcoholic drinks as ponds. The <laughs> definition is fairly liberal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a few weeks ago, you published an article in Tidbits entitled iPhone Recommendations for Senior Citizens. Now, my audience knows I'm an advocate for accessibility of technology in all forms, and they also know that I bristle at the suggestion that people past a certain age are good at technology. If you throw in gender along with that, such as a phrase I hear all too often, it's so easy your mother could do it, the top of my head pretty much blows off. So I got ready to read your article with a desire to learn any tips you could provide to making the iPhone more accessible to seniors and ready to jump down your throat if you implied that elderly people cannot be technically competent. <clears throat> I have to say, I was delighted to find that you pushed, pushed none of my hot buttons and you gave terrific advice. So can we start with how you explained this? This wasn't downplaying the competence of folks over a certain age, like maybe me, I'm on Medicare now for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's 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 terrible because you're absolutely right that there's there's no requirement that people over some age somehow like cease to be able to like know how to use a mouse or whatnot. Um, but simultaneously, we have to acknowledge that there are physical and cognitive declines that come with age for well, pretty much everyone sooner or later. Um, and so it's it really comes down to individual situations. And so one of the things I was I tried really, really hard to do, because even in the discussions that had sort of triggered this article, people were doing that, you know, well, I'm 75 and I have no trouble, blah, 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 blah. And like, mm -hmm. of course not, you know, that, but that doesn't mean, you know, someone who's in their 60s couldn't be suffering early onset Alzheimer's or something like that, you know, or like some sort of tremors or... Or tremors, right? I mean, like arthritis in the hands um, make, can make using mice and keyboards and stuff difficult. Um, uh, eyesight can be a problem mm -hmm. um, that you're starting to like bump up the font on your iPhone. Well, yeah, you can do that, but you may need to do it a little bit more. And again, not to say that someone who's young might not need to do that too, <laughs> but it does happen. And so it really just came down to, you know, be sensitive about the fact that there's no, there's no, guarantees no nothing that's 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 like going to be true of everybody but it is worth talking to the person and seeing what they're having trouble with and honestly comparing it with what you know about them i mean like i mean this was really aimed at people who are helping friends or family okay. and and so because i mean let's face it Probably the people who are reading tidbits fall into that category. Well, frankly, they're reading tidbits. They're on the 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 older end of the spectrum um, because they've been doing it for thirty three years, uh, just like us. Um, but uh, uh, but when you're helping someone, you tend to know what their strengths and weaknesses are. You know that um, you know I I've been helping my parents and my in laws for years now with various tech things, mm -hmm. and you know. For the most part, they're just fine. But on the other hand, there's a few things I know. Yeah, you just I don't I don't expect them to be able to do X, Y, or Z because it's just not something they're going to be good at. One of the things uh, that I was thinking about when you were saying uh, you know these are probabilities that these declines will happen to you if you're lucky enough to live long enough. And one of my blind friends says he, he says think of yourself as currently abled. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. No, the, my, 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 actually, my wife um, uh, works as an editor in uh, the, the, oh my God, if I can get the whole name, the Yang Tan Institute on Disability in the Workplace Ooh. Um, at, at Cornell. And um, so basically, it's a group of, of researchers and outreach people, and they, you know, they do tons and tons of stuff about disability in the workplace. And that's one of the, one of the things that they're very big on, that the, the disability is really, really widespread. Mm -hmm. And the one that uh, they, there's only one really interesting disability that isn't considered one, which is vision. So you can wear glasses and you get perfect vision. That's not considered a disability. So, oh, but, that's... you know, you know, you know, it's, it's, you know, 
basically that's the one we've really, really solved. But then, um, oh, okay. So you're saying realistically, if you can get right. perfect vision with with glasses, then it's not a disability. Precisely. That's a, and right. One of the things that bothers me is that if you get glasses, nobody looks at you as less. Right. But we still look at people with a hearing aid as, oh, you're old. You know, you're falling right. apart. And <laughs> and I think we need to get past that. Or or like yeah. my, my father-in-law was very resistant to um, even using a cane and eventually he wouldn't use a walker. But my mother was like, well, wait a minute, if I get a walker, I can walk faster and more securely and not fall down. Why wouldn't I do that? And, right. and if we can get into that mindset, then it's like, maybe she's not disabled because now if with a walker, she can walk perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Of thinking about and it. so, yeah. So in any event, it's, it is absolutely the case. And, you know, and, and as I said, the, the simple fact of the matter is that some people will be, you know, lucky enough that they don't suffer from arthritis or hearing loss or, you know, tremors of any sort of that kind of thing. That's absolutely fabulous. But a lot of people do. And right. so, and if we how can, can learn we... about how to solve yeah. those things, and if it ever does happen to us, we're ready to go, but we can help other people. So right. you right. had early experience in this area with your grandmother and grandfather, <laughs> Grandpa Bernie and Grandma Estelle. Yeah, yeah. Those are my, my grandparents in New York, in New York City. And um, yeah, long, long ago, we gave them an SE30. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, and they had a modem and... and uh, Oh, actually, did they have a modem? Yeah, they must have had a modem. Boy, this is, this is going back a long ways. Um, and the SC30 was not new, let me tell you. This was probably back in, you know, I don't know, the 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 Performa days or something like that. <laughs> <Dark days>. Um <laughs> but uh but yeah, so they 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 were never significant computing people. Um and uh and but they could do a little they could do email and things like that. And that, that was about it. Um and uh and and then we switched them to one of the Gumdrop iMacs when those came out, and that was about the time we got an iMac from my other grandmother, um, who lives lived much more close, lived much closer, and then sort of watched them honestly be able to do less and less. And mm-hmm. you know, my my grandma still, you know, she was sharp as a tack the entire time. I mean, she she did not have mental mental issues in the slightest in terms of declines. On the other hand, she was physically a disaster. I mean, she couldn't turn on light switches. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, typing completely is right out. Um, you know, she she could use the phone if she had memory buttons to she could push one button on yeah. a phone. Um, so 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 yeah. So like you know, that was a situation where you know, as long as Grandpa Bernie was 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 okay, and he was barely physically fine, um, that, uh, you know, she would literally tell him everything to do and what to type <laughs> and all that. But that's how they've been driving for years. Yeah. So like, this was, this was like, that was their, that was their relationship. I mean, boy, I don't know, I don't know that everyone could do that, but, uh, but that, you know, she'd been telling him how to, how to drive and how to navigate for decades. So, you know, this is how they worked. They were a team. And, and, you know, eventually when, you know, when he died, um, she, we just, there was obviously no way that she could use the computer ever again. So, we, you know, we, she didn't. And, okay. uh, and then my other grandmother, she started to have, um, to, you know, started to have dementia and, you know, it turns out computer use is pretty early on the things to go. Um, you know, that was like, she just couldn't figure out how to use the, couldn't remember how to use the computer. This is back in early days of Mac OS 10. So she could still damage it in ways by moving things around, um, okay. accidentally. Okay. And so eventually we, we just sort of, you know, to took it away. Yeah. Um, so again, very sad, but, uh, but you know, you know, nowadays in some ways it's easier because I think iPhones and iPads are more obvious to people who maybe you know don't have either the his, his, history of just like technology being built into their bones um or they you know it's more obvious because you're that direct manipulation i th- you know. have always said that there's something about the ios interface that is tapping into our dna not not learned stuff and and the the two examples i'd like to give is hand a, a very very small child like two years old, an iPhone, and they'll eventually figure out how to get to photos and start looking at pictures. Likewise, a friend of mine's mother had dementia and they got, they brought, they would bring an iPad to her and open up photos and she would look at the photos and zoom in and zoom out and, yep. and, and smile and laugh. <clears throat> and, and it was intuitive to her. She didn't learn it, 
because she couldn't yeah. learn anything at that point, but she was very happy with that. And so it's tap that you're probably right. It's that direct interface, not the indirect connection that really, yeah. really makes a difference. And I do think, you know, uh, you know, I think we have to be careful, though, not to go too far also, which is so I just did a did some did something about, you know, talking about the difference between touch ID and face ID. Mm -hmm. um, because Apple moved all this stuff, you know, like in one, you swipe up from the bottom to get control center. And then you swipe down from the top right to get control and center. How do you get to the home and, screen? And, and right. And like, you know, like, like these are not intuitive in mm -mm. any way, shape or form. They're completely arbitrary, completely non-discoverable. There's no way you'd guess. And, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, some aspects of the touch interface are great. Others are truly maddening. And, and, you know, I mean, this is, I mean, actually one of the things that comes up, in fact, is the difference between Touch ID and Face ID. So, you know, someone who's had a Touch ID phone for some years, well, the question becomes what happens when they need a new one? What do you get them? Yeah, now you yeah. and I went back and forth on on this um, yep. in particular. We're kind of jumping in the middle of our agenda, but that's okay. We're fine. <laughs> We're fine. So yeah. there, there's pros and cons to this. So you've got somebody who's um, used to Touch ID and... I'm going to do what I said I hate. I'm going to uh, generalize and say that as we get older, <laughs> we become less plastic in our willingness to accept change. I, I think that's, I think there's something to that, but I would also suggest that I think society in general is becoming more resistant to mm. change. I'm, okay. I'm seeing this in younger people as well. Just, just like don't want to do it. Um, you know, too much, there's too much going on. So, so yes, I think okay. that's, I think that's not, it's not an unfair characterization of older people, but I think it's also hitting but people at a younger young. age too. Yeah. Well, the example I was going to give was, uh, my brother had a touch ID phone and he needed a new phone. It was very, very old. And he was trying to, it, it, I was talking to his wife and his daughter and they were try saying, no, we've got to get him a touch ID phone because that's, that's the only thing he's going to be able to use because he's not very technically savvy. A, a brilliant guy, no mental difficulties at all, but just set in his ways, man, doesn't like tech, doesn't want new tech. And I said, the problem is look at his age. He's too young. He's going to outlive touch ID phones and he's going to have to learn someday. Will he be better at learning that later or today? <laughs> Maybe he's yep, resistant so. today, but that is not a curve that's going to get better over time. Yep. Precisely. And you know, right. I mean, I have people, you know, uh, some of the folks on Tidbits talk, you know, people saying, you know, I'm 96, really not get another Mac. You know, this one's good for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, that's fair. But wow. If you're, you know, 72 or something like that, probably going to be multiple iPhones in, in your future. You hope um, you're going so, to outlive that. <laughs> yeah, precisely. <laughs> well, so um, you, liked, you started this out by talking about the approach you do when, or you would suggest that we do when talking to somebody about a new phone. What, 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 kind of, what is your approach on that? Well, I mean, certainly familiarity is a big one, and there's nothing wrong with with familiarity. Um, obviously, given your given your 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 caveat of the well, it's going to happen sooner or later, and it's going to be harder in the future. Um, but the the other thing that is worth worth thinking about is that I mean, right now, a Touch ID phone means an iPhone SE, mm -hmm. and you know that's basically Apple's smallest phone now. And so one of the other trade-offs um, that you get that becomes possible when you buy a new phone is you can get a bigger screen. Mm -hmm. And so um, simply one of the big advantages is, well, if the screen size or what you can read on the screen is also being an issue, switching to Touch ID or Face ID might be require learning some new stuff, but here's the benefit. Big advantage um, he, of that. Yeah. Here's the big advantage of that in I know terms two of women who bought uh, Apple Watch Ultras because they refuse mm -hmm. to wear bifocals. Yeah, they're like in right. their late 40s, early 50s, and they don't want to wear bifocals and they can't see the screen on the on the smaller watches. And they love it. They're like, look, I don't need glasses. It's like, did you see the size <laughs> of the font on your? You could get a lot more on that screen, but they're perfectly happy, so I should leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they and they, and people who do that usually have these tiny, tiny wrists, and the whole thing's like sticking out on the side. Like a ham radio stuff. taped to their <laughs> to their arm. Yeah, yeah, whatever works, whatever works. Um, so yeah, no, I, I think that's I think that's that's sort of what's important, and that's kind of why you know I I was emphasizing that oh wow, it's really important to like talk to the person 
and see, think about their strengths and weaknesses in terms of like, you know that they're having trouble seeing stuff, then here's one of the reasons why you could encourage them to move up to even one of the big phones, you know, the pluses or the Pro Maxes. Um, right, you know, right. that that might be when you, because one of the things Apple does a pretty good job with in accessibility is making, you can make stuff big. Um, big and you, know, uh, you talk in your article about uh, how to turn on bold text too. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, that was a big one. I, for me, honestly, you know, for a long time, I was using wearing contacts and, um, and then having to go with reading glasses or computer glasses and distance glasses and sunglasses. And that's why I gave up the contacts mm -hmm. um, because I'd have so many glasses involved. Like, I could just wear a pair of glasses. I did the same um, thing. I did the same thing. I was wearing glasses and contacts. And I was like, wait a minute. Why why am I doing both again? <laughs> I did <laughs> yeah, it for years right. before I made that that connection. It took me a long time too, and now I have these you know infinitely you know pro, you know progressive uh, progressive mm -hmm. lenses and you know blah blah blah. It all just works much more easily. But before then, I was really getting into that you know I can't read stuff, and I was bumping, I was going to the bold text, I was going to bumping up some of the sizes and things like that, and so. I I get it. Like I know how frustrating it can be when you just can't quite read the damn thing. I have one um, suggestion I didn't see in your um, in your article. When I started to lose my close vision, I noticed it at work before I noticed it at home, and I realized what was going on. Hmm. I was using this horrible PC laptop. Not horrible, being redundant, uh, <laughs> but it was it was a terrible HP display, and it was super dim. When I came home, oh. I was using an Apple display and at full brightness, the brightness of the screen contracts mm -hmm. your pupils. And if you know anything about photography, you know that a, a smaller aperture gives you a longer depth of field. So more is in focus. So <laughs> the brighter you set your screen on your iPhone or your iPad or your Mac, the smaller your pupils are going to be and the better you're going to be able to focus. Interesting. Yeah, I, I hadn't thought about that, but it makes sense. Uh, the one thing that I have also run into, which I find fascinating, is, and as this happens in middle age for for a lot of people, is sensitivity um, to light either high or low. Right. It can go um, the other way. That can be a terrible thing. It can go in both. Like, so, like, I like things to be bright. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I do not like dimness, um, whereas my wife's the exact opposite, where she does not want stuff super bright. And, you know, I'm often coming into like the kitchen and turning on the second set of lights because I can't quite see, but she's obviously comfortable that way. And yeah. so, you know, so we're, we're, you know, we're, we're often, we're often different in that regard. And um, Josh Centers, who we used to work with on Tidbits, uh, same thing. He, he really did not like bright, you know, things being super bright. Yeah, so, so I, guess I do that's find it in interesting. The list of questions, right? Is to yeah, say precisely. Uh, let me turn the brightness up for you and see whether that helps you see better or does it bother you? Right. That right. would be an approach and I, to take. I do find it interesting because Apple keeps pushing how like we're making this brighter every time. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm sure some people appreciate that, but <laughs> Look, Tanya, really that's not <laughs> not, not not my issue, you know. <laughs> what about uh, what about other things you talked about arthritis uh, motion so problems? So, well, before that, they, the funniest one that actually that I, someone, a woman said that her parents had run into as, as they got fairly significantly older was their skin stopped working with touch interfaces. Yeah. So it's a capacitive touch interface. And like, I can't even quite envision what's involved with that. Maybe sort of a dry, certain kind of dryness. I actually or... lick my finger before I touch Touch ID on my Apple keyboards, Adam. Okay. Um, so yeah, I can't, guess can't uh, pay with Apple Pay without licking my finger. <laughs> so Face ID for the win there, right? Precisely, just gets you one less thing you have to touch. Yeah, um, and less so, licking of my screen and stuff. <laughs> do not be licking the screen; it's not sanitary. I'm sure. Oh well, I wash my hands a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was it that uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? I think one of the one of the books they had they they'd sent off the telephone sanitizers. <laughs> it was a it was a whole class of people. <laughs> job that they job they had. So, um, yeah. So so I think the um, uh, yeah for arthritis, you know, that's an interesting one because the again you never quite know what's involved. Um, and, um, and so that's one where I think you not just have to ask someone, but you'd have to like watch them and see, you know, what, what they how have they trouble typing? with. How are they moving? Yes. Are they precisely, um, I could see different kinds of keyboards and, and pointing devices being better or worse, but I can't predict what they'd be, you Steve's, know, like, 
Steve's dad has uh, neuropathy, so he can't. He doesn't have uh, sensation in his fingertips, and so he won't even try an iPhone. So that's out of the picture. But <laughs> but when he's on his Mac, it, it's really tedious to watch him type, and he's a dedicated dedicated one password user. Um, just like I, I, he's done testimonials for the show. He's 86 now and he's just as happy as he was at 80 with it. But he, um, we were watching him. We were replacing his Mac and Steve said, you know what? I'm going to buy you. I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to buy you a new keyboard. And he bought him a touch ID keyboard and it took him quite a while to get, understand how to do it. And he has to hold one hand with the other hand and lay it down. He is in love with Touch ID because now he doesn't have. We gave him, you know, a seventy-five character password with a goat in the middle of it to make sure it's secure, and now he doesn't have to type it, and he is so happy. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's yeah. where it, maybe somebody with arthritis would actually be better off with Touch ID as long as they don't have yes. to lick their finger first. <laughs> <laughs> well, and 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 also, I would say it, it is actually worth investigating other keyboards. So you know, I'm a I'm a big 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 clicky keyboard kind of guy, mm -hmm. you know, like I like my DOS keyboard. I mean, I get, and, and I'm, I'm old school. Like I don't, I don't, I get the impression that like, man, keyboards have gone seriously niche. You know, you can get them with, you know, 17 different switch types and LEDs under them and, you know, they can pulse and all that kind of stuff. I don't do any of that stuff, but, but just like that big old Apple extended keyboard feel, um, might be better for some people than the really low low travel keys that out and are all of Apple's they can keyboards feel now. It. Yeah, I did yeah. something and funny. It, I, I installed a uh, menu bar app called Clack. Starts with a K. <laughs> it gives you clicky keyboard sounds on a regular keyboard, <laughs> and I swear it makes a difference. I use it on my MacBook Air because the keys are a little too mushy for me. I want it to be yep. more clicky, and now I can make it sound clicky. I swear it's easier to type on now. You know, it may be one of those things. It'd be interesting to do some true like human factors research on that sort of stuff, but it's entirely possible that there's just a little bit of an auditory pathway. Um, that, okay, give that, somebody that, two different MacBooks, yeah. one with this clack thing mm -hmm. installed, one without same identical keyboard saying, we're testing these two different kinds of keyboards. Which one are you more comfortable typing on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be fun. Well, and what, what I find tricky with like typing speed is, is like typing speed is all one of those like, oh, type this passage. I don't know how to do that. Like, uh, you know, that's something from high school, you know, where you would actually type a piece, you know, type something from one piece of paper into, into a typewriter. So, like, I compose. Like, I can never tell you how fast I type because it's how fast I'm thinking about what I want to say at that particular moment. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, like, I'm a fast typist, I think, but I don't really know, you know. <laughs> so, so yeah. But, but again, all the variables. Um, so, you know, mice versus trackpads. Um, there's some funky, funky stuff still out there. Um, trackballs are still available. Not very many, but they still exist. Um, I use this thing called a Contour Designs roller mouse, which is a bar that goes slides back and oh, forth I and rolls. I saw that ages ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's been around forever. I mean, it goes back to one of the early, was it the outbound laptop? One of the, one of the super early like Mac portable out, out, you know, laptops back in the day. Um, use that for use that for the first time, um, but it works works fine. But it's you know it puts the pointing device right in front of the space bar, so you're not going off to the side to use something else. That's that's my thing. I actually like laptops better because again, the trackpad's right in front of the keyboard rather oh, than off funny. to the side. I hate the trackpad on laptops being right in front of me. I'm a huge <laughs> trackpad fan, but it's because I have an external one, so it's more comfortable out than than kind of trying to uh, bring my fingers in front. But uh, yeah, well, let, let's go back to focusing on the. Uh, pun intended, on the um, on the <laughs> iPhone. So you give specific, specific instructions on how like to increase the, the text size and bold text, and yep. you've got great screenshots. Of course, this whole article is linked in the show notes. Um, you you got into one for, you talked about reduced transparency and increased contrast. Talk, talk a little bit about what those do and why those are important. So increased contrast is... Um, it's again one of the one of those things you just sort of have to see to believe. I mean, like it's just it makes every like you look at it you're like, oh wow, everything pops a little better. And this is actually important. Um, that um, this guy who used to write for us uh, um, a while back, Charles Moore. Um, he and his wife are our vision specialists. He was a photographer. She's actually oh. a researcher in vision stuff. And um, and so one of the things that uh, he pointed out and some stuff was that the human eye is designed to see contrast. And we actually care about contrast more than detail. 
So, really? you know, if you, I mean, there's, there's an old tidbits article I could find probably um, and send you where he show where he illustrates this. You know, you look at two photos, one with more detail, one with more contrast, and you're gonna you're drawn to the one with more contrast. So, for any kind of scenarios where you're like your vision is just not as sharp as it should be. Um, Bumping up that contrast, the increased contrast switch can make the whole thing a lot easier to see because Apple likes to feather stuff, right? They like yeah. these, these smooth transitions between between objects and stuff like that. I just turned and, it on and I like it. See? <laughs> yeah. So just anybody who's playing along and not looking at the show notes right this minute, it's settings, accessibility, display and text size. And then there's a bunch of options, one of which yep. is reduced transparency. Um, uh, increased so- contrast. I'm sorry, increased contrast. Yeah. yeah. And it basically just makes the the light gray a little darker gray and the dark gray a little darker gray and the text a little darker. Um, yeah. I might leave that on for a little while and see what I think about that. Yeah. So what does it's, reduced transparency do then? So reduced transparency is another one of these things that Apple likes doing. We're like, oh, we want to pretend that all these things are like sort of translucent pieces of plastic. And so that when you have one thing over another thing, you can kind of see through it. Hmm. And that can be a problem again, just it it just kind of muddies stuff for some people. Um, and it doesn't really, in my mind, it doesn't really ever improve anything that that I don't believe in the iPhone interface that it's actually helpful to believe that you're on top of something from a functional standpoint. I don't think it, it's helpful on the Mac either when it comes down to it. No, I don't think so. And I, and I turn it off. I actually turn it off all the time because I take screenshots, right? So it screws with your screenshots oh because... I never thought about that. That's exactly what I need to do. Yeah, because I want my screenshots to be gray in the background or, you know, whitish, lightish color anyway. Whereas who knows what the, my, what it's on top of the screenshot is on top of, it could be half yellow and half blue, um, you know, just because that's the window that's behind it. So, so yeah, reduce transparency. I actually encourage people to turn off, um, certainly for documentation purposes, but just see what you think, because I think the whole thing just looks a little crisper um, in terms of not having whatever, you know, bleeding through. I'm looking it, for it on the Mac now. I'm not paying any attention to you because I'm going to go turn this off. <laughs> turn reduce, it off right now. Reduce transparency. Boom. Yeah. Well, let me increase contrast while I'm at it. Ooh, that's a little... And, you, and you'll notice... On the Mac, it's a little uh, uh, OS 7-ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's a little, a little excessive. Um, the one thing you'll notice immediately reduce transparency is the menu bar stops, you know, being... It, it just gets a gray background. Ah. Oh, you know what? Where, that, I'm not going to do it because that's going to ruin all the cool new features in Bartender 5 that let you have these different colored tints of your menu <laughs> bars. Uh, uh, At least yep, until that, I'm done doing my screencast about Bartender yeah, right. 5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so in any event, so those those are two that I actually, you know, increase contrast de- depends. Reduce transparency, honestly, I I think is a you know, worthwhile shutting off for most people. I don't think it yeah. adds anything, and um, it just makes the whole interface a little bit, I don't know, coherent in some ways, you know, and, yeah. and predictable. Like, you know that this is always going to be this color rather than, well, whatever's behind it's now changing the color. It's not bad enough that they made every window look identical, but then they make it look different just based on what's behind it, so you <laughs> really can't recognize it. One of my favorite well, things... <clears throat> oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that I noticed I'm always amused when I'm seeing someone writing something that has screenshots and, uh, and the screenshots are like bright pink yeah. because, you know, but, and, like I think they just don't know. Like they don't, don't like see it, yeah. but you know, I'm not like going, wow, you had a hell of a background on there, dude. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you had your Barbie background up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now I'm wondering if you've been mocking my screenshots all these years. Well, anyway, moving on um, <laughs> in this category, I've talked about this on the show before, but one of my mm. uh, very few changes I make on an Apple TV is in accessibility, display, focus style. You can turn on high contrast and that puts a white box around whatever's been selected. You ever looking at the Apple TV and you're like, I don't know which ooh, thing I've got selected. Oh, oh, I'm glad you told me about that because I don't know what it is. Um, some of these apps, right? Like some you of them, like tell. they, like they, they make it enough bigger, but the Apple TV app in particular is terrible. I'm like, I have no idea. I mean, I'll actually literally move so I can see something yep, change. Absolutely. Okay, I'm turning it puts that a white in. I'm turning box that around it. Right so accessibility yeah. display, focus style, yeah. high contrast. 
Yeah. And I think one of the lessons of this um, is that you should go, everyone should go into accessibility settings Mm -hmm. and just play. Mm -hmm. Turn them on, see what happens because, oh man, are they, some of these are just better. Like this is, we are not recommending this focus style thing on the Apple TV because oh we're old or we have bad vision or anything like that. It's because it's a bad interface. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's as simple as that. They did a bad interface, and and you know it is not clear enough to people who are highly technical and completely aware of what's going on. Um, right. That's a hint. Yeah, 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 that's a hint that you did it wrong. Um, that's a good so, idea to do that. Uh, on the other hand, make sure you tell them to leave, I don't know, four to five weeks open in your schedule to work your way through all of the accessibility <laughs> settings. Yeah, right. I know you Earth remember when I, when I did my, uh, my iOS 11 settings mind map. That was it, it, like 80% of my graph was accessibility. It is insane. Yeah. Yeah, I thought about yeah. doing it again, but I don't have that much time left. I'm, I'm 65. I'm not trying to get it done in time. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly wouldn't finish it before iOS uh, 19, you know, 18, whatever the next one. <laughs> exactly. Like and on my post, I promised I would never update this. So I got I to <laughs> stick to that. Um, so let's see. Oh, one of the other things that intrigued me that you talked about in the article was rearranging the home screen and, oh, and yeah. making that more simplified. And I had never thought of doing this for somebody. Yeah, so so this is again, I think, a little bit more of a, a frankly a help for someone who is having some cognitive declines, um, but maybe not necessarily. So so one of the problems you run into an iPhone is that there's just too much. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of stuff there, even if you don't have a ton of apps. And let's face it, anyone who's been using the iPhone for a while probably has a fair number of apps, even if they didn't really want to. And I do, I'm seeing pushback. People don't want to get another app. You know, I mean, I've, I've kind of, I'm, I'm kind of done. I'm like, yeah, I've got as, I've got as so many apps. What's another one? I don't care. You know, <laughs> I did a clean install on my iPhone this time. Oh, and I've been downloading them when I need them, and I, I, I can't really tell the difference. <laughs> yeah, the, the app library was brilliant for just like, yeah, fine, they're over there, whatever. I search for um, everything anyway. <laughs> um. So. So yeah. So so. Think of it as da- think the home screens as dashboards, right? I mean, that's what they are. Um, but but there's some things that you use all the time. The f- the top four should be on your dock mm-hmm. iPhone. I guess you can have more, obviously you can have more on the iPad. Um, but that's the point of it. Like it's always there. Those are the most popular. You know, the most common things to use. So and you want to make what sure the person uses the most. Right. Like Precisely. If they don't ever use it as a phone because they have a landline. Then they- take the phone out. Take the phone off precisely, um, and um, you know, but maybe photos or messages, you know, whatever it is they use, totally fine. Um, and then, sort of, the next level down is the first home screen, because those are the things that you see every time you unlock the phone, and so that's a fair amount of space. You know, you can definitely put, you know, the things the person probably uses. And that for many people, that may be all that you really need. You may not need to get into a second screen. But, you know, if there's those secondary apps that, yeah, oh, yeah, I need this every now and then because it's how I, you know, access my bank or, you know, I have to use customer support to get to the, I don't know, the, 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 you know, the cable company or something like that. You know, those kinds of weird little apps that, you know, you need every now and then. Those are the kinds you could put somewhere else. And it's probably still good having them visible. They don't have to go search for them. Um, I think search is generally not a good thing to rely on um, when you're helping someone else. And you're just like, oh, you could just search for it. Yeah, because that requires you never learning know. that gesture and figuring out where to type and typing and knowing the name. Right, and right. And sometimes they change the names too. You know, like every now and then apps. Yes, the, the, the one you downloaded is named something else on the app. Right, right, precisely. So, um, so, so you know, I really like the idea of doing that. And then, within those spaces, thinking about what organization makes the most sense, and it could be by location, um, it could be by name, or you know, this is one that I—it's a little funny, but but my wife thinks this way completely, which is by color, you know. I my blue apps are over there. It's a blue app. 
you, you know, know, I'd love to tell the story. My, my friend Naraj and I were uh, working on some web development together and we were in different offices and we were constantly on these screen sharing calls or not. No, we weren't screen sharing. We were just on the phone. And we realized after like a year of working together that he and I think completely differently about finding something on screen. He is, <laughs> he said to me, he was telling a story about his father and he said, I told him to click on Eagle Mail. And I said, Eagle Mail? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> What's Eagle Mail? <laughs> look at the, look, at the, it's not true now, but the yeah, mail icon right. had an eagle on it for many, many yeah. years. I yeah. literally never noticed it. And yeah. what, the way I think is in Cartesian coordinates. So when I was talking to him, I would say, look in the upper left-hand corner. And when he was tell, talking to me, he'd say, look for the blue icon. Neither yeah. of us were communicating at all. So we had to go, <laughs> okay, I need to talk in color. You need to talk in Cartesian coordinates. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I mean, this is, I mean, this goes way back um, to when Word started to do like icons on toolbars without names. And, mm. you know, and they're like, oh, I'm just like, I don't see them. I literally don't even see them. I could not oh, tell you what they look like. Without the words. Um, I, um, well, yeah. Like, I, I only need the words. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't think in pictures at all. Yeah. And so, you know, so like, again, everyone's different. Don't assume and the person's like you. Right. Don't assume the person's like you and, and, you know, and, but you can, you can usually meet them somewhere, um, you know, with helping them. If you them, ask them which you know, one of these is male and they say the blue one, then you know they're <laughs> Tanya. And if they say the one that says male under it, then they know it's you. <laughs> precisely. Precisely. And, you know, I mean, and that's partly like why I do actually search for some things because I'm enough of a word person that I think in words and it's not really a big deal for me to type a couple of characters and get it, get the word to come out. Do you out. ever have that brain fart moment though, where you go to do the, and it, you're just complete blank. You have no idea what the app is called. <laughs> like it's just gone today. Not with not with apps or things that I'm doing like that. Where I have that, and I'm actually quite put out about this, is um, playing music on a HomePod. I cannot think of artist names, album names, song names, at, basically at all. Um, oh, like I don't, I don't, I can't. There's so many of them that I can't pull them out, oh, and gosh. like I don't, I don't, I don't even know like what I want to listen to necessarily. So you have to go um, with a genre like '80s rock or something instead. Sometimes that what I'll more do is like there'll be an artist I'll, I'll I'll be playing certain set of artists regularly and the, I'll default to one of those because mm -hmm. they're the only ones I can remember. Um, I mean I'm I'm you know again I'm of the age where you used to like flip through the albums or you know or look at all you know look at your your rack of CDs and I needed those kind of memory aids to say oh yeah I do want to listen to such and such who I didn't because like I didn't think I wanted to listen to it but I once I see it I know yeah. oh yeah Peter Gabriel would be perfect right now but like you know like <laughs> Tomorrow, I couldn't Peter I Gabriel's Peter name won't come to you. <laughs> Not in the slightest, not in the slightest. So yeah, so it's 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 really kind of a problem. And, and of course, the problem is, is that the the more that I can only think of the certain set that I'm listening to, like, oh man, I'm really bored with these ones. <laughs> the only ones I listen to. <laughs> My so, solution like, is I put on a podcast. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so so it's a perfect it's a perfect example though of like w how different people's you know, brains work or don't work with uh, retrieving data. Yeah. Yeah. So you did you did some other things on on simplifying the home screen. I was really intrigued with with being able to create buttons for who somebody wants to call or text. How did how did so you do that? Well, so so yeah, this is another one where this goes back to hold the whole like visual interface, right? That um that that knowing kind of where to find something when it's moved around. So think about messages, you know. If your message is anything like mine, I don't know how many hundreds of conversations are in that list, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you only really notice the ones at the top. <laughs> right, right. Um, and if I have to go down you know, more than a scroll or two, like I'm just going to start typing and like try to find it again. Hope it works. So that's, that's, you know, that works for me. But for someone who has just ended up with these things organically, but they don't really have that spatial sense of how to search this list visually, you in messages, you can pin um certain people or groups and that's a really nice thing to do so that you know i i, I have tanya pinned so she's always in the upper left corner um the only problem with that is is that you have to make sure you then know to look at your your you people because oh i've done that where I'm scrolling going, where, where's tom merritt can't find oh yeah i pinned him now i can't there right. he is precisely so so you know so it, it can and be good people and bad, change I, their profile photo and then you can't find them again <laughs> That could be an issue too. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, 
Yeah, precisely. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, like, oh, oh, that's right. But so, so I think that, you know, again, trying to keep things in predictable places is a big help to some kinds of people. Okay. And so pinning stuff in, in messages. So I thought, well, that's kind of cool. You can pin stuff in messages. Maybe you can pin stuff in mail too. No, you can't. <laughs> um, or in contacts or in anything else. Like you're, you're just, Favorites, but that's emails from those favorites, not right. them. It's not, it's not yeah, precisely. Um, so I, 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 I am completely, I'm actually not even a big fan of shortcuts. I don't really like shortcuts, but <laughs> yeah, this we've was already clearly... decided we're going to do a whole episode on everything we hate about shortcuts, right? <laughs> yes. Um, but I was like, this has got to be something shortcuts can do. And, and so, you know, so like, yeah, it turns out it is actually really easy to make a home screen icon that could be just you could just do one per person if you wanted to get you know if you only had three people total or you could do just one for you know like make ma create mail and then it pops up a list of the people and you tap the name and then it creates a message to them the people being the people you write to the most often right because the kinds of in the, in the situations i'm thinking about you know again you know like the grandparents i've worked with you know when they did do email they were probably writing to six people you know mm -hmm. like there was just this was not they weren't doing email per se this was you know writing to this person to that person and you know and that was it you know these relatives so and you know they might conceivably receive mail from someone in reply but that was they weren't ever going to initiate more mail to that person or that address okay. so this was just trying to make it very easy to get back to the three five eight people that they would ever want to actually initiate mail to Okay. And that screen uh, that shortcuts thing is in the in the tidbits article, and it's super simple and easily modified by literally you really can figure it out. <laughs> I don't know. Even if, don't even, know, even if you hate shortcuts, <laughs> it, it, it's not on the Mac, right? This is on the phone. This is on the phone. I might have a chance on the phone. I've I've never yeah. gotten a shortcut to work on the Mac, not yet. <laughs> not I, I will admit, not me either. We we're. Yeah. We will not go into the into the into the particular problems we had, but yeah, you're 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 telling me all this. You can't get the shortcut. I'm like, oh well, don't use it on the Mac. That never <laughs> works. Yeah, he was like, I don't understand. I've got this thing working. Then I said it was a Mac. He goes, oh, never mind. <laughs> so uh, now we do highly recommend uh, downloading executable code from the internet uh, from any source you find and and installing <laughs> it on your devices. So, no, but yeah. uh, we know we know yeah. Adam, and we know it's going to be great. Right. Uh, and, I, I'm and, definitely going to try that. Yeah, it's 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 worthwhile, and you know, again, very specific use for specific people, but mm -hmm. uh, but something could be you know could be, and and the idea behind it again is a, is a simple one, but it's the provide me a menu of actions, and you know that might actually be not a terrible thing to do in certain other cases too. So okay. I could imagine that you know someone just not like getting the concept of like finding apps or whatever, and you could actually give them a menu. They could tap one thing and it would just list out the names in a text menu of the apps. Maybe I need that for those days. I can't remember the name of an app when it disappears <laughs> on me. <laughs> well, that's because you don't see by color. You know, if you, if you just looked at the blue apps, you'd be fine. I'd be fine. But Adam, be, be fair. All apps are blue. So, you know, <laughs> but, uh, there, it is true. I, I have I have looked at that and man, there should be some more variability in app icons and colors because That's they great. all you look get a green one. You're like, oh, I can see it. <laughs> uh, you also anyway. you also had another suggestion I liked was uh, editing their address book to simplify it. Yeah. So this is something that I mean, it's again, probably increasingly a problem, honestly, because, you know, people were professionals, they retire, um, they take their their address book, which includes every person they ever communicated with during their busy professional life. Right. Um, and suddenly they, you know, are now only talking to friends and family. Um, and, you know, 10 or 15 years later, they've still got this address book with, you know, 500 people in it. All of whose addresses and phone numbers have changed anyway, because and they were work uh, colleagues or I'm contacts. positive that I don't know 1,263 people today, <laughs> but I have that many contacts. <laughs> Precisely. So you know, like it's a little bit like going through going through. Um, I, mean, I don't know. I've I've had this a number of times where um, my 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 family would tell me like they need to clear up space. 
on their mm. computer. And so we'll go through their files or we'll go through their photos or things like that because people often end up with like mega duplicates of photos. And so this is a little bit like that. It's, it's you can think of it as content gardening. You know, so you're just going through and it's like, oh yeah, I am never, I don't even know who that is. I am never going to talk to so-and-so again, you know, so-and-so passed away. You like all of those kinds of things, get them out of there because it's not going to help you. And all it's going to do is confuse you later on Stress when a, a search, right? A search brings up five Peters, you know, like, ah, oh, which one was it? You know, suddenly, whereas, you know, and again, it's a little bit, it's a little bit like you were saying with, um, you know, with a touch ID switch is, you know, like if, is it going to be easier in 10 years to do this? No, <laughs> probably not. So, you right, know, like, right. Take the time and clean up your clean up your 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 contact list now, and then you'll have be able to work with it more fluidly. And you future. also change people's names, like change it to Sun, or I or I don't Abby usually recommend of that Abigail Van Buren. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, I would I would actually always recommend making things familiar, mm -hmm. but but probably you know, but usually in such a way that you're not going to lose the search. So you could actually mess around a little bit with like the, you know, I th there's the nickname field um, right, right. or, you know, or ways like that, you know, like Abby versus Abigail, that's not going to be a problem. But, you know, when a person's name is Francis, but everyone calls him Buddy, you know, right. you know, like, yeah, you probably should leave the Francis in there, um, you know, at some, you know, but, but, but put Buddy in as well. You know, that's, that's enough of a change where someone else would have no chance of ever, ever figuring out what you meant. Right, right. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, text input. Uh, you, you talked a little bit about dictation. I'm a big fan of dictation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things. The, the only problem I have with dictation is that as a writer, I want it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And it just you know, it just does things where I'm like, no, I would never say that, you know, and I would punctuate correctly. I have to turn off the punctuation because it does the punctuation just wrong. Uh, so the latest version on, I, I dictate on uh, uh, 15 Pro and on my yeah. uh, Apple Watch Series 9, and that's where it's supposed to be doing it on device now and everything. And yeah. the punctuation is just bizarre. I mean, it's yeah. a, a, auto punctuation. I don't think it works at all. I mean, it'll just like, Put a full stop in the middle of a sentence. That it, you now paused. it makes no sense. Right, right. You know, like I don't, I don't get it. One of the things that is absolutely the case, um, you don't see this so much when you're dictating in messages, um, because you tend to do short things and, mm -hmm. and then just send them. Um, I dictate sometimes in um, in an app uh, where it's just like free form text and like it's more like I'm I'm dictating for three or four minutes. Um, oh, kind of okay. a journaling, journaling kind of app, and um, and I will see it go back and fix stuff. Yeah, yeah, and that's pretty fun. I mean, I really, I'm because it and it bugs me and too because like, oh, you got that word wrong, and I'm like, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna wait because you'll get it right. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it, and I've been trying to convince Steve of that. Is if you give it a minute, some a lot of times they'll go back and it's like it picked up the context and right. went back and fixed it, and that does work really well. But um, a lot of people are really resistant to doing dictation, and other people yeah, love it. Yeah, and I don't, I mean, I don't know why they're resistant to it. Um, I mean, some of it is that it just never is, it's never exactly what you want, right? It's always going to make some level of mistake, or like I was communicating with someone in messages, you know, using dictation uh, last night, and it used the word gonna, G-O-N-N-A. Oh, it did. Oh gosh, I would never type gonna. Like it, it, it pained me that it used the word gonna. I didn't quite notice earlier. And I, you know, I mean, like, yes, I probably said gonna, but I meant going to. <laughs> you know, so um if, if you, know, you so go that, to hell, it's gonna be having dictation do that to you for the rest of your life. For an editor <laughs> like you that's so precise yeah. in your use of language, yes. that's just the worst thing ever. Yes. So, uh, so in any event, so yeah, so I think there are people who like to, but I really do encourage the use of it because even for someone who's a fairly good typist on an iPhone or an iPad, um, the dictation is just going to be a lot faster. And the one problem I'd worry about with, with recommending it for someone with, with any kind of, uh, motor control problems is that if it does make a mistake, getting the cursor back to the right point, even by pressing and holding on the space bar and using it as a trackpad, it's still dicey. Yeah. Yeah. It's not you know, easy. 
yeah editing is editing is tough but um is it any but the problem is is you're going to end up doing that anyway because all if you've got motor control issues you're going to be making a ton of mistakes yeah and you might make so, them and then back up and fix them right away instead of having to move the cursor yeah. and then you got to remember yeah. now that the dictation stays on you have to remember to put the cursor back at the end of the sentence in order to keep going the other thing yep. that I, I see people struggle with is knowing which of the microphones to use so like if you're in messages, there's a microphone right next to where the text field is, but there's another one in the bottom right of the screen. The bone in the bottom right of the screen is dictation. The other one yes. is record audio. And so I see people make that mistake. Is that is that audio one still there in iOS 17? I sort of want to... I'm looking I, at it. I, I, you're looking at it. Okay. My, I'm using my iPhone as a camera, so I can't look at yeah. it. Um, the uh, I, Yeah, the audio messages and messages have always bugged me. Um, you know, like that just strikes me as sort of you know, that's wrong. Don't do that. Hang on. Um, <laughs> hang on. This just in. Sorry, I'm dictating. Um, if you tap <laughs> the microphone in the text field now, it enables dictation. Oh, okay. So okay, good, good. Hold it to record. Let me see. I don't think so. I just a tap. Okay. So that's no, the thing. It's like, just, it, so now they've, okay. they've, they kept it there. So you right. get two of them, but they do the same thing. That, right. That might help. And um, the other one, the other place we get to is in Safari, because you can do the voice search in the search field, um, or you can type, you can do dictation, which inserts into the search field. The difference is, is whether the voice search automatically um, enters your search as well. So you're saying if, oh yeah, because you have a microphone in the search field, right? Or in the, I'm sorry, in the search slash URL field. Right. And then, and then the one in the bottom right. You're saying the one that's in the search field, it'll it'll hit enter when you stop. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. It's basically do the search, whereas the one in the in the, in the keyboard that's just types useful. what you say. So yeah, so the, I'm 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 glad you said that because like I, I I thought the audio messages thing was always problematic. You know, like in the sense of like, well, but I you know, like you don't know what the person said. You don't know if it's like an appropriate time to listen to it. You know, uh, it's just like it's no, the don't story's do that. So long. You know, it's better in voice. I do like to do that. Uh, I have a friend who, I don't know what it is she's doing, but uh, we use Telegram for communication mostly. And you'll see so-and-so recording dot, dot, dot. And you know, she's like, bump that button. And it happens all the time. And nothing ever comes out. So she eventually notices, but it might yeah, be right. like an hour later. <laughs> yeah, right, right. who knows what's going to happen if she actually ever sends. I, uh, I find people resistant to dictation saying, I don't want to look like an idiot. I don't want to look like a crazy person. You look like a crazy person if you dictate to your phone. Uh, it only happens if you talk like a crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, it is true that you have to think a little bit about how, what you're saying. And, oh, the worst part is when you're like, I'm, like I'm driving and Tanya's dictating messages to her phone, mm -hmm. but I want to edit them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, don't say it that way. <laughs> you know, like it triggers all the editor, editor instincts in me. And of course, she's going to just send because that's the whole point of it. Uh, right. Just to do it quickly. Oh, it's even harder when you're driving and whatnot. Um, you know, the car's moving, so she can't type as easily as she would otherwise. But uh, but yeah, so it to is. Be, to be clear, you're driving when this is happening. I'm driving. I'm <laughs> driving, and she's te she's texting, and yeah, and so that's the thing is, I like I can't I I know I can't even say anything right because I'll interrupt what she's saying, or my right. words might even get into it. So like I'm just sitting there going. <laughs> my biggest problem is my son is 33 years old and he still thinks it's hilarious to yell diarrhea in the middle of whenever I'm texting, when I'm dictating <laughs> every single time. Wow. 33. <laughs> yep. Someone, some it's, people never grow up. It's still funny. It's still funny. <laughs> now I've started to do it to other people because it is pretty funny when you do it. Um, I think the, the big picture of what you've been talking about here is... A kind of a rule of thumb I use with people is look at someone you're communicating with as your customer. You want them to be able to communicate with you. Uh, you need something from them. And so if you figure out how they want to communicate, that's that's going to be better than trying to tell them they should communicate yeah. the way you want to communicate. So yeah. you talked about a grandparent to a grandchild learning that they don't use the telephone anymore. <laughs> Step one. <laughs> Number two is email, maybe, maybe not. Uh, texting, 
uh, one of my favorite things is, is as an elderly person, we have a tendency to, to say goodbye, like to sign off on a text <laughs> message. But anybody under 30, 40 years old would never do that, right? That would yeah. never happen. You just stop talking. Right, right. Yeah, it, it, that's, I, I think it's, that's, it's very important to, you know, meet people where they are because it takes two to tango. You know, it's as simple as that. And, you know, it's, it's what's funny is, is that I think we usually think, we, we're usually thinking about all these other things as like, oh, how would the older person who might have these issues, what would we do to meet them? Mm-hmm. But, but realistically, it goes both ways. Like, again, if they yeah. want to talk to a teenager, phone isn't going to work email really isn't going to work either right. um and there's i mean and, but simultaneously they're probably not going to do snapchat you know the grandchild probably or the grandparent probably won't do snapchat um so, or so that halfway TikTok. might be right right here in, Tec- in text yeah, yeah right <laughs> yeah so right so that's so i think that's you know and again that's a little bit of that conversation and you know in the case of the grandchild you know talking to the talking to the parents and saying so what how am i actually going to be able to get to this kid um I I also think about time of day too. Yeah. Um, Steve's mom is in her early 80s and very tech savvy, and uh, she has started to use messages more because she knows she gets a more immediate response. But I also know that if I email her first thing in the morning, sometime before nine o'clock, I'll get a response. If right. I email her in the afternoon, it might not be till later that day. And then she feels all apologetic because she maybe wait an hour for a response to something that didn't matter. But if I can do it in the morning, she'll that's when she checks her email. So I, I, I get a yeah. sense of that. Yeah. Um, one of the most interesting things I read about this cross-generational communication was an article talking about words we use. Notice what a younger person says if you say thank you. They will never say you're welcome. <laughs> They'll say no problem. And yeah. even if you complain, they say no problem. It's like, no, it really was a problem. And so this, what is this phrase, no problem? So, but But what young kids hear... Uh, this article claimed this, that what young people hear when they hear you're welcome is they hear you're welcome. They hear sarcasm. Oh, oh, really? And so ah. we could ah. be miscommunicating when we're both being completely polite on either end of the yeah. age spectrum yeah. there. I did see something, I think it was maybe Seth Godin talking about this, where he's like, he, he actually recommended, um, uh, it's my pleasure mm. or something like that. Um, that that was sort of a you know a way to to way to to get around like the the no problem or you're welcome pleasure. being being That's weirdly very nice yeah right, another right. one I've heard yeah. lately is uh, I appreciate you and it seems yeah. out of context but it always makes me feel really good. I think that I don't know if it started there or was just popularized there. I believe that's a Ted Lasso. Is it? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because he the Ted Lasso character says I appreciate you a lot. Yeah, interesting. So that's my it's that's my, my guess. Pleasure. On that I one. really like that. That's now, gotta make people feel good. Yeah. And the, the other one that actually I I know about, but I refuse to cave to. Um apparently young people are perturbed by punctuation at the <laughs> end of texts. Oh dear. Like like if, that if you put a period at the end of your sentence in a text, that's like, you know, you're 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 mad or you're you're clipped, you know, clipped speech. You know, that kind it, of it'd thing. It'd be as bad as a as a, a period at the end of a bullet in a list of bullet points would be you and me. <laughs> How do they yeah, feel about precisely. exclamation points? I hope that's okay cuz I'm a big fan. Um I think exclamation points are pretty heavily used now. Um, okay, so good. that's, you know, but, but again, in the right place, uh, but, but yeah, apparently periods, periods are like complied disapproval, et cetera, et cetera. And again, I'm like, no, it's punctuation. Get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a whole, uh, a whole episode on, on language and, and punctuation, but we, be, we better cut this off. This has been fantastic. I, I highly recommend people, uh, sign up for the tidbits newsletter, if nothing else, because it's a, it's a great resource. I always find something interesting to read in it. And this article is linked in the show notes with lots of screenshots where the background is not pink. Uh, <laughs> done by Adam to uh, to explain the different things that he does and get that that uh, that uh, shortcut from you. And so, if people want to find it, it's at tidbits.com. And it looks like you're pretty uh, not on Meta products, but can be found on <laughs> on uh, Mastodon. I see tidbits at mastodon.social and Adam Angst at mastodon.social. Are those good spots? Yeah, 
Yep. Yeah, that's totally fine. I'll see everything that's posted there. Yeah, I've pretty much decided that I don't do big company social media. Um, I mean, Meta Meta is problematic in so many ways, and Twitter. Well, I don't even want to start. <laughs> I'm looking at Meta yeah. now, going, "Hey, it's not as bad as Twitter." <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I actually had that issue too. For a long time, I was like, "Well, Twitter's kind of a cesspool, and you know, I don't approve, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. But at least it's not Meta. <laughs> At least not Facebook, and at least not Instagram. And no, now I'm like, oh way. man, when when, yeah, like I still haven't brought, I haven't still have not come to the the point where I can use the letter X without. Well, I can't. I haven't used it yet. I've actually mostly I'll, just I'll done tell you how to use the it. service. Refer to it. No, as. refer to it as X Twitter, because <laughs> then it's insulting. <laughs> I like it. All right, we should probably cut this off. As always, a super good time, Adam. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chit Chat Across the Pond Light. Did you notice there weren't any ads in the show? That's because this show is not ad supported. It's supported by you. If you learned something, or maybe you were just entertained, consider contributing to the Podfeet podcast. You can do that by going over to podfeet.com and look for the big red button that says support the show. When you click that button, you're going to find different ways to contribute. If you'd like to do a one-time donation, you can click the PayPal button. If you want to make a recurring contribution, click the weekly Patreon button. You're only charged when I publish an episode of the NoSillaCast, which, let's face it, it's every single week, so I don't charge Patreon for Chit Chat Across the Pond Light or Programming by Stealth episodes. Another way to contribute is to record a listener contribution. It's a great way to help the NoSillaCast ways learn from you and takes a little bit of the load off of me doing all the work. If you want to contact me for any reason, you can email me at allison at podfeed.com, and I really encourage you to follow me on Mastodon at podfeed at chaos.social. Maybe you want to talk to the other NoSilla castaways. You can do that in our Slack group at podfeed.com slash Slack. Thanks for listening, and stay subscribed.